Whatever stage a project is in, the people involved need to know what's going on. Maybe a project manager is concerned with keeping the work on schedule, or maybe the scrum master and the rest of the scrum team needs to know a project status every day. Whatever the situation, the people involved need to manage and track the work. To let them do this, Visual Studio 2010 provides reports, dashboards, and more. I'm going to walk through simple examples of how these might be used at three different stages of a project. First, planning at the start of a project or iteration. Second, tracking progress during a project or iteration. And third, deciding when a project software is ready for release. I'll start at the beginning, planning. Pretty much every project and every iteration starts with planning. Plans are typically based on requirements, which in VS 2010 are stored in Team Foundation Server. A project manager might use Microsoft Project to read those requirements directly from TFS. He can then use this tool to plan a schedule, which might look like this. On the left, you see a list of tasks. On the right, a schedule of who will do those tasks and how much time it's going to take. This is a very waterfall style model here, and so people who are more agile focused might not use this kind of thing. Nonetheless, it illustrates the idea that you can use tools like Project to work with requirements, with tasks, with planning based on data in TFS. Once a product is underway, there are lots of different things that team members might want to track. And so VS 2010 provides lots of reports and dashboards to let them do this. A good example is the Stories Overview Report. Here's how it looks. On the left here, you see a list of user stories. User stories is how agile people refer to requirements, pretty much the same thing. Next to that, you see a chart showing the percent of work completed for each of these requirements, these user stories. And next to that, a summary of current test results. Now think about this. What you're seeing is a range of data drawn from TFS from various aspects of the project. The user stories, the requirements, the task completion, the test results, all being shown together in one cohesive and hopefully useful report. All produced automatically from the data maintained by TFS. Projects start and projects eventually end. But when is the code you're creating ready to be handed over to the customer? How could a team know when it's time to release their work? One obvious metric is when you've fulfilled enough of the project's requirements. But another one is the code's quality. And this is something that's much harder to judge. The VS 2010 Quality Dashboard is designed to help do this. Here's an example. You see here a variety of graphs showing various aspects of project quality. Here's the progress on test plans, for example. Looks pretty good. Here, though, is the rate of bug reactivations. A bug reactivation is a case where a tester found a bug, gave it to a developer, the developer fixed the bug, gave it back to the tester, and the tester said, nope, the bug is still there. This is not good. This is not good. And look at this, the code churn measurement. I do not want to be on this project. The point, though, is that this quality dashboard provides a summary in one place of information drawn again from various aspects of the data in TFS, all focused on letting you decide what the quality of your project and of the code you're creating really is. Using this dashboard, Project managers or scrum masters, even the customer, can better understand a team's progress. Instead of seeing bits of data in isolation, they can see the totality of a project state, which can help them all make better decisions. This information could also help figure out when the product they're building is ready to ship. And different projects have different standards, of course. So a team building a website for a community portal 
probably has a lower quality bar than one building an online ordering system for a major retailer. But whatever the group's risk tolerance, they need data to make good decisions. And so the quality dashboard is an example of how VS 2010 provides this information. Every development project must be managed in some way. Doing this requires information, current information, about the project. The reporting and tracking aspects of VS 2010 are designed to provide this. Because they draw their information from TFS, the centerpiece of the process, they can provide current and complete information about a project status. 